So the base of Sharia of Islam is the Quran which Almighty Allah has revealed towards us. And this is the miracle which Almighty Allah granted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A person's dignity will be elevated based on the relationship that particular person has the, uh, the connection which he has with the Quran. And even in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one of the main purpose of Ramadan, of fasting, is Each and every person should be a person of piety, God fearing, God conscious, a person of taqwa. And what is the sign of a muttaqi? What is the sign of a muttaqi? The ulama they say. Even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the Qur'an La rai wa fi hudal lil muttaqin La rai wa fi hudal lil muttaqin In this Qur'an there is no doubt There is no doubt And in this Qur'an hudal lil muttaqin There is guidance to the muttaqin The God fearing Where yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says The purpose of Ramazan is that you should be a muttaqin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hudan bil muttaqin, in this Quran, there is guidance for muttaqin. <coughs> and then in another verse, Allah ta'ala says, Wa maw'inatun lil muttaqin. And in this Quran, there is advice for muttaqin. And thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa tadhikiratun lil muttaqin. And it is a reminder for the muttaqin. So in the month of Ramadan, Allah is expecting each and everyone should be a muttaqi. He should be a person of piety. He should be a God-fearing person. And the, and the most important alama sign of a muttaqi is he will be very much attached, inclined towards the Quran. And number one, this Quran will be a guidance for him. Budan lil muttaqi. And this Quran will be a mawila. It will be an advice for a muttaqi. And then Allah says, وَتَذْكِرَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This Qur'an is a reminder for a muttaqin. So even after 28 days or 23 days in this month of Ramadan, we and, me and you should see how much I am inclined towards the Qur'an. The muhabbat of Qur'an. The interest of reciting the Qur'an. Because my dear respected brothers and elders, even the scholars who are related to this kiyah, they also used to say, the most important amal to elevate our ruh, to elevate our ruh, to nurture our qalb and to crush our nafs is the recitation of Qur'an. More you read Qur'an, your ruh, your soul, your spirituality will be elevated. 
and your nafs can be crushed. If a person doesn't have a relationship with Quran, that means, my dear respected brothers and elders, the relationship with Allah is also minimized or diminishing. It's the alama, the sign of a muttaqi is he will be so much attached with the Quran. Sometimes, yes, he might not be an hafiz, he might not be an hafiz, but still he will be regretting, oh, in my young age, I should have been a hafiz. Or at least he will be keeping the intention, whatever possible, I will start to memorize the Quran. And every each and every day, the relationship with Quran will be increasing. And he will be very much happy to make at least one of his child as a hafiz. If he doesn't get that opportunity, at least to be with the hafaz, or at least to be attached with the madrasa, or at least to attach himself with the ulam. That's the sign of a muttaqi where he thinks that Quran is the letter which Almighty Allah has given us. Just imagine a love letter, a love letter which comes from a girlfriend. Even though, even though he has read it several times, he wants to keep it under his pillow. Whenever he remembers her, he wants to take the letter, just go through, see the words, how much love is there with that particular letter. And just imagine, who has revealed us the Quran? It's our creator. And I'll give you another example, my dear brothers. One person, he says, he gets a letter from a very strong person. Who is that person? For example, the president of the country. The president of the country. The president of the country, he takes his own pen, takes a paper, and start to write few sentences to a particular person. And after writing the letter, that president, he gives the letter to the prime minister. And that prime minister, with all security, he comes down and he gives the letter to this particular person. Just imagine how much he is dignified. He will say, do you know who wrote the letter? The president, with his personal pen, with his handwriting, he is the person who wrote the letter. And do you know how this letter came to me? The prime minister, with all the securities, he came to my doorstep and he is the person who gave the letter. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهُ definitely, definitely, definitely this Quran, definitely this Quran, لَتَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ It is a revelation, it is a revelation from the Lord of all the worlds. So it's not precedent, it's not precedent of a particular country. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the worlds. Who is he? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabba, Al-Qahar, Al-Bahha, Al-Razzaq, Al-Fattah, Al-Azim, Al-Qabil, Al-Basid, Al-Qafil, Al-Rafi'ah, Al-Mu'iz, Al-Mudil, Al-Samir, Al-Basir, Al-Hakam, Al-Adal, Al-Latif, Al-Khabir. How many sifat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has? How many characteristics? الأول، الآخر، الظاهر، الباطن، البالي، المتعالي، البر، التواب، العفو، الرؤوف، مالك الملك، ذو الجلال والإكرام، المقصد، الغني، المانع، الضار، النافع، النور، الهادي، البديع، الباقي، البارث، الرشيد، الصبور جل جلاله. And this Almighty Allah is the one who revealed it. For us, a president sending a letter. Subhanallah, do you know who wrote this letter? From which authority this letter came to me? It came to me personally. But Allah says, And this letter, this Quran, it's not from the Mahluka, it's not from the creations, it's from Allah. And through whom Allah has sent the Quran? Then Allah says, Nazala bihi ruhul And do you know who bought this Quran? Who brought this Quran? Allah says, Nazala bihi ruhul The trusted spirit, 
the trusted spirit Jibril alayhi salatu was salam al namusul a'la al namusul akrab ruhul kudus ruhul amin many several names given for Jibril alayhi salatu was salam and he is the leader he is the chief for all the malaika the chief of the malaika is the one who brought the Quran from Almighty Allah and it's not the Prime Minister who brought the letter from the President and finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says where I have revealed the Quran innahu latanzeelun min rabbil alameen nazala bihi ruhul ameen the trusted spirit has brought this Quran to who? ala qalbi ala qalbi Upon your heart, Ya Rasulullah. Upon your heart, Ya Rasulullah. And this Quran is revealed to the heart of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Baha, Yasin, Ajmal, Akmal, Muhammad, Mustafa, Ahmad, Mujtaba, Sayyidul Kawlain, Khatamul Nabiyyin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of the creations. He is the person towards whom the Quran was revealed. And my dear respected brothers and elders, myself, yourself, if we are not interested in this Quran, see who we are. We should be fortunate enough, at least if we are not a Hafiz, we should be fortunate enough to come forward and give one of our children to become a Hafiz so that they will also be a Hafiz al Quran, bearer of the Quran, because Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu la hafidun. We are the one who revealed the Quran, wa inna lahu la hafidun, and we have taken the responsibility to protect the Quran and see how fortunate that heart is. The heart which is chosen by Almighty Allah to preserve and to protect the Quran. It is a selection from, of Almighty Allah. It is a selection of Almighty Allah. So that doesn't mean that, okay, Allah is the one who selects. So it doesn't mean that we should keep on sitting. We should idle. And if Allah choose, choose me, yes, let Allah take work from me. No, no. We are in a bazaar. We are in a bazaar. I have a product. I want to sell my product. My dear respected brothers and elders, what we will be doing? The first person who is crossing the road, I will just show my product. Here I have something. Don't you want to buy it? I am ready to sell it to you. It's very cheap. We keep on marketing our things. So that through marketing, he will be interested and he will be saying, okay, this person is a very good person. I want to buy something from him. In the same manner, we should Please, we should beg Almighty Allah, Ya Allah, please accept me, take my heart to preserve the Quran, Ya Allah. If not, please take my son, my daughter, my wife, my progeny's heart to preserve this Quran, to protect this Quran. And say, I'm ready to sell myself, Ya Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come forward and choose whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. If we are not willing to sell, if we are not willing to sell, why should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purchase it? Anuzimukumuha wa antum laha kaibun. We will ever never force you these things while you are ignoring it. While you are not serious about it. We will never ever force it. So my dear respected brothers and elders, the Quran is the main source which Almighty Allah has given us for the hidayah of the whole entire humanity. For the hidayah of the whole humanity. Me and you should be respected by this Quran. We might say, my son is very much fluent in English. He is very fluent in Hindu. He is very fluent in Urdu. He is very fluent in Sinhali. In Sri Lanka, you just be Sinhali. And we are proud about it. But we are not bothered about how much my child is fluent in reciting Quran, how many surahs he has memorized. We are very much proud to say that my uh, son in the O-level examinations, in the A-level examinations, he has these sort of uh, results and he is now in the college, now in the university, he is a degree holder, he is a PhD holder, but no relationship with the Quran. 
My dear respected brothers and elders, it's very much important. On the day of Qiyama, the respect for the parents is based on the relationship what our children are having with the Quran. Not with the secular, worldly education that they are bearing. We think we are proud about it. But my dear respected brothers and elders, the haq of the Quran and their parents are dignified on the day of Qiyamah because of bearing or protecting the Quran in their hearts. In a hadith it is mentioned when a haq of the Quran, after his demise, when he is kept in the cupboard alone, no father, no mother, no friends, nobody is with him and he is alone in the cupboard. While being in the cupboard, suddenly he will see a person. And he will ask, and, and the person will ask, Ta'arifuni, do you know who I am? He will say, La A'arifu. The half of the Quran will say, La A'arifu, I don't know who you are. Al Ta'arifuni, do you know me? La A'arifu. No, I don't want you, don't know. Then that person, that, that person in the cover, he will say, Ana Sahibuk al Quran. I am your company, I am your company. And the Quran. Ana sahibuk al Quran. Alladi admaatuka fil hawaji wa ashabtu layla. I am the person who made you to fast in the daytime, in the hot sun. Wa ashabtu layla. And I am the one who made you to break your sleep and do qiyamul layl in the nights. Inna kulla tajirin min wara'i tijaratihi wa inna kaliyama min wara'i tijaratihi. In this world, in the world, each and every one, they were running behind their business. They were running behind their dunya. Even at that time, you were running behind the Quran. So, the people who were running behind the business, they got their profits in the world. And today, And today, you will be given a profit for the business which you have done in the world. The people were running behind the world, but you were running behind the Quran. And today you will be seeing what profit you are going to get. And on the day of judgment, in that particular hadith, it is mentioned, The crown of dignity will be placed on his head. The crown of dignity, not because of science, not because of math, Met not because of zoology, not because of biology, not because of chemistry, but because of Quran. So, you the Allah Rasihita Jun Baka. So, the crown of dignity will be placed on his head by Yuksa Bali Dahu, Hulataini, La Yukabi Uha Ahaluddhuni. And they are both parents, his mother and father. A dress, two dress will be put upon them. Allah says, La yukabbimuha ahlu dunya. The people who are living in the dunya, they will ever, never be able to estimate the value of it. If I ask you a question, how much is a perch in Troyden? We can say, oh, in, oh, one perch of land is this much. How much is a perch in London? How much is a perch in Slough? How much is a perch in Hero? How much is a perch in Los Angeles? We know the value of each and every place. We can guess or we can tell accurately. But the two dress which will be given to the parents of the Hafiz al Quran, Allah Hafiz subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yukabdimuha ahlul dunya. The people of dunya will ever, never be able to tell the value of it. And the parents will be surprised. Oh. I am dignified in front of all the humanity, in front of all the creations. And they will ask, Bima kusina hadihi, Bima kusina hadihi, Ya Allah, why we have been given this very valuable, very precious, very noble dress? Why we have been given this? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Li ahdi baladikum al-Qur'an, because your child has taken the Qur'an in so my dear respected brothers and elders, whatever worldly education that we are having, I am not degrading. It's a necessity, it's a necessity, it's a barura, but Quran is not the barura, Quran is the 
purpose of our life. The worldly education is the need of our life, but the education based on Quran is the purpose of our life. It's the purpose. While driving a vehicle, while driving a vehicle, windscreen is there, side mirrors are there. Windscreen and side mirror. So it's very much important to see the windscreen and drive, isn't it? But side mirrors, it's a need. Without side mirror, can we drive? Can we drive? It's really tough. It's really difficult to drive a vehicle without the side mirrors. But whenever it is needed, we have to see. But if we drive, looking the side mirror all the time, we will go and knock. We must go and knock. So the purpose is to see the main screen. And the need is the side mirror. Without side mirror, tough. But without the windscreen or without looking forward, we cannot go and reach the destination. In the same manner, the Quran and the knowledge of Quran, it is the purpose of the life. And the worldly education, it is the need of the life. So we should definitely have these worldly education, but for the cost of the worldly education, we cannot totally forget the education, the information, the ilm, the knowledge, the know which Almighty Allah has given us through the Quran. So my dear respected brothers and elders, as parents, as youngsters, it's very much important for us also to give a place in our heart to this Quran. Because so much so we love the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also definitely love us. If the love is less with regard to the Quran, the love with Almighty Allah, or the love that which Almighty Allah has, has with us is also going to be less. And the other point, my dear respected brothers and elders, it's very much important to have small madrasas and small makatids where this Quran knowledge is given. To have a healthy community, my dear respected brothers and elders, the thing which all, uh, 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 the thing which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us also, that a, a segment. A group of people of the community, they should be well versed in the Quran. Even in Medina, even in Medina, there was a group called Qurra al Medina. Youngsters, youngsters like Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, just 13 years when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu. Can somebody guess how old was he? He was appointed. He was appointed to write the Quran as a Katibul Wahi. Those days, only a selected group of Sahaba were given the authority to write the Quran in the presence of Prophet. Whenever a revelation comes, Prophet used to recite it, and the selected, that authorized group, they used to write the Quran. And among them, it was Zayd ibn Thabit. Can somebody guess how old was he at that time? Nine. Sorry? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yes, brother. Somebody was telling. Nine. Nine years. Any other answer? Twelve years. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu was only eleven years old at that time. Eleven years old youngster, he has been given a very big responsibility to write the Quran. He had the talent so much, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to appoint him as the personal translator of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because many foreigners used to come, Jews used to come and meet Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Correspondence, letters, come, go. Now Prophet requested Zayd ibn Thabit for Zayd, please, you study this particular language. The talent which Almighty Allah gave him within two, three weeks, he learned the entire language. And he was appointed as the personal secretary of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the official translator, in that young age, in that young age, after the demise of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and at the time of the Khilafah, at the time of Khilafah of uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, these Qurra al Madina, Qurra al Madina, who are the Qaris, who are the reciters of Quran, group of people, whenever the people embrace Islam and in their mahallas, in their mahallas, what Prophet used to do, 
select these Qurras and send them to all those Mahallas and make them also to memorize the Quran, learn the Quran, how to read, how the, what are the Masail. So a selected group was appointed for this task. My dear respected brothers and elders, in, uh, 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 in Yamama, more than 70, 80 Qurras of Medina, they were murdered. They became shuhada. At that time, there was a need. There was a need to compile the Quran. And then Abu Bakr Umar radiallahu anhu, in their mashura, it was decided this task should be given to who? Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu anhu, who was just only 22 years old. He said that if you want to remove a mountain from one place and to place it in another place, please tell me I'm ready to do. You are giving me a massive task. They said that you are a youngster and you are capable enough to do it. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has utilized you. So my dear respected brothers, youngsters, they had the passion of protecting the Quran and spreading the Quran. And Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu was the mu'allim al Quran in Madinah al Munawwar. Umar radiallahu anhu in his khilafah, he, he used, he, he, he didn't even send Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu out of Madinah. He always wanted our madrasa in Madinah should be conducted by Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu. So knowledgeable. That's youngster. And not only that, my dear respected brothers and elders, wherever there was a need of Mu'allim al-Quran, in the history it is mentioned, in the history from Syria a letter came from the governor. The people are increasing and they want to learn the Quran. They want to have the knowledge of Quran. Please send us Mu'allimul Quran, teachers of Quran. At that time, Umar radiallahu anhu used to, he, he, he sent one jama'ah in which Mu'allimul Jabal radiallahu anhu, Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. These most important sahaba, they were sent to Shah, to Syria. And a rule was given, you go, you start your own madrasas and teach the Quran, make them to memorize the Quran, give them the knowledge of Quran. When you have equipped a system over there, and you can go to other places. And it is mentioned Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, when he was a mu'allim al-Quran in Masjid Baghdad, 1,600 students in 10, 10, 10, 10 halqas. 10 people, 1 halaqa. 10 people, 1 halaqa. 10 people, 1 halaqa. All together, 1,600. Just imagine. So the madrasas, from those days, it was, it was taken care by the leaders. By the leaders. And for Basara, and for Basara, Umar radiallahu anhu sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu. And after a period, Umar radiallahu anhu wanted to know what is the progress. Wa Abu Musa, I have sent you as the Mu'allim al-Quran, what is the progress in Basra? And in reply he said that within this small period, 600 were far half of the Quran. 600, huh? And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was sent to Kufa. The population was very high in Kufa, so what happened? Nearly 2,000 Mu'allim al-Quran, 2,000 teachers were sent to Kufa. And the leader was Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. And nearly 70 Sahaba from Badr also participated and they were sent over there, go teach the Quran. And this is the way how the Quran was preserved. The Kufar were created. They wanted their children to memorize the Quran. And not only that, my dear respected brothers and elders, not only the four Kulafa are Rashidun. Even we know the youngsters, those days the youngsters, they were, they had the ability, the capacity <laughs> to take Islam to another country. Like Tariq bin Ziyad, Rahmatullahi alayhi, he took Islam to where? <coughs> Spain. <coughs> when he was just 17 years old. Youngsters. Muhammad al-Fatih, when he was just 22 years old, he is the one who captured Kustantaniya. And Muhammad al-Qasim, Muhammad bin Qasim, who was just 17 or 19 years old, he is the person who took Islam to Sindh, India. They were youngsters. And in Spain, a youngster took Islam, 
well to a country. But these days, unfortunately, the youngsters, the youth these days, I'm not actually taking Islam to another country, taking Islam to his mahalla, taking Islam to his family. Unfortunately, they are in a status where they cannot take Islam even to their own lives. So much we. But youngsters those days, they used to take Islam to countries. So see, when the maktab system or when the madrasa system was very well equipped and taken care by the ulama, by the uh, umara, by the leaders, by the respective brothers and elders, the deen of that particular area was preserved. And finally, I'll tell this and come to a conclusion. In Spain, a youngster took Islam to that particular country and that country was converted into a country where Muslims was the majority. Muslims were the majority. To a level where the Makatibs, the Madaris were very well equipped and taken care by the chiefs, by the leaders. Once the leader of Urtuba, the governor of Urtuba, he wanted to give his daughter in marriage. He wanted to give his son in marriage. And he wanted to give his son to a Hafiz quran And he gave a notice, okay, in which house there is a Hafiz, please lit a candle and place it on the window so that we will identify on which houses there are Hafiz, so that we can finally come to a conclusion and decide to whom I am going to give my son in marriage. What's the point? So to see particularly on that night, each and every house, the handle was, the candle was, each and every house. Because each and every house, they had a half of a Quran in Spain, in Portugal. So he was confused, to whom I am going to give my daughter? Okay, the next day, the other task, what? In which house, the half of a Quran, that particular girl, who has memorized the Quran and along with the Quran who has memorized the entire hadith of Mu'atta Malik, the kitab at that time, the only kitab which were there, before Bukhari, before Bukhari. So, if a girl, young girl, have memorized the Quran along with Mu'atta Malik, please lift the candle. To see in that particular night, many houses, the handle candle was. So that was pain, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Where the madaris, where the makatids, where the institutions for Quran were equipped and very well looked after, Islam mm -hmm. was born. And you know the neighboring country, neighboring country to Spain is France. They always wanted to topple the governments, they all, always wanted to take the power of Spain. So what they did, they sent some spies to go and see the ground situation. Go and see the ground situation. And those spies, when they came, pretending as Muslims, they came and saw to see a youngster of 16 years old was crying. He was crying. Like nothing. So they came closer, they consoled him, and they asked, Oh, my dear son, why are you crying? What made you to cry? With all difficulties that youngster, 16 year old year youngster, he said, Today I have completed this. They said, Today is a day of joy. Why are you crying? What made you to cry? He said, no, no. The other youngsters who are in the same age of mine, they have memorized Quran much before. And their mothers, their parents gave them the opportunity. They were utilized for other dini religious khidmat services. But my mother kept a condition, unless otherwise you have memorized the Quran, I will never ever send you for any other purpose. For any other religious services. So I am very much worried. Just now I have completed my hippal. I should have done it much before. So the spies, they were surprised. They returned to France and said, don't even dream about dream, dream of capturing Spain because the youngsters are very strong in their imam. They are attached with the Quran. They are into Quran, they are living a life, the madaris, the makatib, the institutions are very well equipped and their religiosity is very high. And the historians, they mention, after another 30 years, again France sent some spies, after the two years. Okay. They came, they were going here and there to see a youngster of 16 years is crying. 
another youngster, not the same one. Huh? You might be in the 30s. So a youngster is crying. They went closer and inquired, Oh my dear son, what made you to cry? What made you to cry? That youngster said, I loved a girl. I loved a girl. I wanted to get married with her, but my parents are against it. They said that that girl is not into our status. So I want to get married with her. He is in the sick of loveless. Then the spies, they returned and they went and said, we went through all over Spain, the system of education, the system of madaris, it is corrupted and the youngsters are not in the correct track. Now you attack, you will be able to capture them. 300, 400, 500 years of Khilafat, my dear respected brothers and elders. Now we go and see the Qurtuba, the Masjid of Qurtuba is converted into a museum. No Muslims at all. What happened? So that's why the Buzarats, the elders of religion, they used to say, if you want to see a healthy community, make the community to learn the Quran, to preserve the Quran, to live according to the Quran. Don't ignore your youngsters. Let them study, let them learn the worldly education. But it's very, very, very important that our children to be attached with the Quran. If we do not do it, my dear respected brothers and elders, what will happen? The same which happened to Spain, where we say the Islamic Khilafat were there for three to four hundred years. If that can collapse, who are we and you? Who are we and you? Just think. Who are we and you? So my dear respected brothers and elders, the most fortunate thing as I entered the masjid, the president of the Al Hidayah Masjid, he called me and said that all night, great if you can speak about the value of Quran, memorizing Quran, having a madrasa, spending for it. Because in this particular place, I think nearly 250 students are coming and going. They are involved in memorizing the Quran. Just imagine in this, within these four walls, is it sufficient for 250 students to learn in this place? We should think as Baghdad, where Abu Garda anhu was conducting, where 1,600 students, 10, 10, 10, 10 halqas, in each and every halqa, there was a mu'allim. So that, that kind of uh, environment should come even in Detroit. So for that, my dear respected brothers and elders, we well wishers should come forward. We should sit with those people. We should be one of the think tanks. We should plan how are we going to develop this madrasa? How are we going to develop our students? How are we going to give the, uh, 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 elevate the status of this system? So my dear respected brothers and elders, so much so we are giving our time, our wealth, our, our opinions to elevate the status of this madrasa. Definitely it shows that the sign is that you are inclined towards the Quran. You love the Quran. And this Quran, to be a muttaqi in the month of Ramadan, one of the main sign is to be attached with the Quran so that the Quran will be a guidance for us, the Quran will be a advice for us, and the Quran will be a reminder for us. So my dear respected brothers and elders, whenever there is a request from the board of trustees with regard to the madrasa, with regard to the Quran, I beg or I request from you, come forward, do the best you can do. And keep an intention, even though me and you, I am not a half of the Quran, and I am very worried about it. But me and you, we should keep the intention that at least one of my child should be a Quran, and on the day of resurrection, that valuable dress should be given to me. And my child, and my child, he should be a means to take me towards him. Shall we keep that near, inshallah? Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi.